and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and as usual we're taking you through our monthly solar PV stats, this time for February 2022. So thank you very much for tuning in to another one of my videos. I really appreciate you taking the time. If you haven't done already, please consider subscribing and pressing the bell notification icon. And of course, liking this video, it really helps out with the YouTube algorithm. So we're gonna go through the solar PV stats for February, 2022 here in the UK. If you're new to the channel and you're not sure what kind of solar setup I have, stay tuned to the end of the video. There's a little kind of montage and details of what solar setup we have. But let's jump right to it with this solar generation, basically the production that we had for February 2022. So for February, we produced 409.01 kilowatt hours of electricity from our solar panels. We managed to consume 97% of that. So 397.43 kilowatt hours went into our house and charging the different things, which we'll touch on a little bit later. And we exported 3% of that. So 11.57. We're actually on the feeding tariff, so we don't get paid specifically for what we exported. But if I, obviously we had the later systems where we didn't have the feeding tariff, we only got paid 64 pence for that export. Now for you, kind of say, oh, that's not very much for export. We try not to export anything if we can. We want to put that energy into car charging, hot water, and our power to be able to use later. Just give you some indication, if you're not on the feeding tariff, with our kind of usage, what we'd kind of get paid for that. In terms of how much we consumed, in terms of solar generation, but total electricity from the grid as well, we consumed 1.39 megawatt hours of electricity. We are quite a high usage household. Again, the two electric cars, we've got the battery. Myself and my wife both work from home and we've got servers and computers and lights and stuff running all day. 71% of that energy needed came from the grid. So 0.99 megawatt hours came from the grid. But as we'll touch on the moment when we talk about the bill, most of that comes from off peak. So we kind of currently are saving about a f or saving two thirds of our energy costs through charging and powering stuff from off grid, which we'll touch on in a moment. So sometimes in these videos, I can talk to you about the bills that we have. Unfortunately, just yesterday, I had my latest bill from Oxford Energy. So I can tell you how things are performed there as well. So in terms of our gas, which we only use for heating the house, so for our radiators, our gas bill was £29.21. And, and our electricity bill covers actually January and February, so the January till uh, beginning of March bill cycle. And our electricity bill was £160.60. And but the key thing here is actually how much our average price per kilowatt was, which actually works out to be 6 0.07 pence. So the standard off-peak cost is five uh, pence per kilowatt. So we're only a little bit above that. At the end of March, we come to a, the end of our current Octopus Go tariff where we're only paying five pence off-peak and like 13.67 pence peak. And that's gonna go up to like 30 odd P uh, during peak and 7.5 pence off-peak. So the savings actually gonna come much better. Obviously, you know, the unit price is going up and that's also gonna play a part in our kind of paying back our, our solar benefit, which again, we'll touch on at the end of the video, uh, but we, we cover that off every year. So I think our average electricity cost in April, when the bill goes up, is hopefully gonna be around eight pence per kilowatt or eight and a half, something like that. Uh, we, we shall see how things go. But obviously as we head into summer, solar production hopefully is gonna cover most of our house needs. So just back again to the production, in terms of the best day we had for solar PV performance, that was on the 27th of February, and we generated 34.958 kilowatt hours of electricity. And our worst day for the month was the 13th of February, where we only generated 1.733 kilowatt hours of electricity. Now another thing I like to do is look at how the month has compared to previous months since we had, since we had solar. Um, so let's have a little look at that chart now. So you can see here, slightly up uh, on the previous year, but 2019 is still our best year so far since we had solar in February for our production. So interested to see what 2023 will look like, but obviously that's a fair way off just now. So as mentioned, we tried not to export anything 
all the electricity that we either generate or import from the grid goes to obviously running the house, charging our Tesla power to heating our hot water via our My Energy Eddy or charging our two electric vehicles via our My Energy Zappy. So we have a 40 kilowatt uh, Nissan Leaf and a 78 kilowatt uh, Polestar 2. So let's look at how we basically use the electricity we generated and imported for the month of February. So first of all, we look at our heating of hot water. So we use a total of 171.6 kilowatt hours of electricity to heat hot water for the month. 14 kilowatt hours of that came from solar, which meant we had to get 157.6 kilowatt hours from the grid. But again, that's all off peak, so it cost us £7.88 for the month to heat our hot water. So for charging of our electric vehicles, we had a total of 372.36 kilowatt hours of electricity that went into charging our cars. That's the 40 kilowatt Nissan Leaf and a 78 kilowatt uh, Polestar 2. 5% of that came from solar, so 18.62 kilowatt hours came from solar energy, and then 353.74 kilowatt hours had to be imported from the grid. But again, that's all done off peak, so it cost us £18.62 from the grid to charge up both our electric vehicles for the month. And then finally, if we look at our Power 2, we know that electricity goes into that from the grid as well as solar. We can't get a very good breakdown, but we know that we got 423.1 kilowatt hours of electricity out of our Power 2, which meant we obviously didn't have to buy that from the grid at peak charging rates. So finally, let's talk about the feed-in tariff. So we get our feed-in tariff with Good Energy. They pay every quarter, but I can easily work out each month what our feed-in benefit value is. And that helps basically for our solar payback calculation. And again, we have a video every year in terms of how our solar system is paying back and when we're going to, I guess, break even and everything will be free. Because right now it's not, not really free electricity. We've got to pay back the solar and the, the batteries. But let's talk about our FIT payments for the month of February uh, 2022. So in terms of the generation, we'll get paid £17.06 for the amount of solar that we generated. And then the deemed export, which is basically half of what we generated and a slightly different rate, we get paid £11.00. Uh, 89 and then the electricity that we didn't have to buy from the grid because it was generated via solar saved us 54 pounds and 53 pence in, in terms of not having to buy that from the grid which means we have a total payback into our solar payback pot of 82 pounds and 97 pence for the month of february 2022 so obviously from april when the our tariff rate goes up those numbers are going to increase in terms of the, the money saved from not having to buy from the grid, which is also going to accelerate our um, payback. So I think we may even half the, the time taken to, to pay back the solar. So it's going to be interested in, I think about normally about September, October time, we do our annual solar update to see how things have changed. I think we were looking at about nine years payback um, right now, but with the energy costs rising, that hopefully should shorten. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you've not seen the solar house setup that we have, um, there's a little trailer that's going to run right now so you can find out a bit more about that. Do you want to know how we have the Spectrum Geek solar house set up? Well here we go. On the main house we have 30 Pimar solar panels. Each of these are 300 watts, giving us a 9 kilowatt solar array. These are mounted on the roof at a 30 degree angle facing 120 degrees southeast so we get a good collection of the sun throughout the day. On the back of each of these panels is a solar edge PV power optimizer giving us more energy, increased efficiency and monitoring of each individual panel. These all connect back to a solar edge 6 kilowatt HD wave inverter and we also have the solar edge energy meter with Modbus which gives us slightly more accurate meter readings and the ability to limit our export values if needed. People often ask, how come you only have a 6 kilowatt inverter when you have a 9 kilowatt solar array? Well, actually, it's more efficient to have a smaller inverter than the size of your solar array, and currently Solar Edge supports a 200% oversizing, which means our 6 kilowatt inverter is perfect for our 9 kilowatt solar array. You need the inverter to convert the solar DC energy into AC usable energy within your home. We also have the Tesla Powerwall 2, 
with the original Generation 1 gateway, which means we don't have any backup capability at all. So if the grid goes out, then regardless of solar or battery, we currently can't live off grid. The Tesla Powerwall 2 is a 14 kilowatt hour battery storage and has 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. Inside the Powerwall 2 is a 5 kilowatt inverter that provides continuous peak power to our house so we can heat things on the hob, turn the cooker on, run the dishwasher, and not have to rely on any surplus from the grid. We also have various My Energy products. So we have the My Energy Hub. This provides remote control and monitoring to the various My Energy devices, such as the Zappi and the Eddy. We also have the My Energy Harvey. This provides wireless CT clamp connectivity to the Zappi and Eddy, so we don't have to have the trouble of running cables directly to those devices, which are some distance away from our main electricity connection. We have the Generation 1 Zappi. This provides us with seven kilowatts of EV charging to our cars as well as automatic solar diversion, so we can redirect solar uh, when the battery is full from the house to charge the car, as well as heat hot water with our Generation 1 Eddy, which provides heat via a three kilowatt immersion heater. When we're not running from our own solar setup, obviously we need to rely on the grid for both electricity and gas. And we're with Octopus Energy, who I joined back in 2018. They're definitely not perfect, but they're one of the best energy suppliers I've ever had the pleasure of working with, I guess, or paying my energy bills to. And I'm currently on the Octopus Go tariff, which means during their off-peak time, uh, I'm only paying a fraction of the amount to charge my car, heat my hot water, and obviously charge up the power wall. So that off-peak is between half past midnight and half past four every morning. If you are considering changing that electricity supplier, I do recommend you check out Octopus Energy. And if you decide to use the link in the description, or as you see on the screen right now, both you and I will get £50 credited to your account on joining. So that's it, the Spectrum Geeks Solar House. That's it, another video. Thank you very much for watching. Again, consider liking and subscribing if you haven't done it already. Take care of yourself and tell the next one goodbye for now.